Did you know that if you take any major triad, let's say G major, and play it over the right bass note, let's say E, it won't sound major at all. It'll sound like it's a minor chord. And that low E note doesn't even need to sound like it's the same instrument. Any low E note will make it work. You can actually make a major triad sound like any type of chord, not just minor. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how and also show you some creative things you can do with that. And then we're going to look at a Stevie Wonder song to see how all of this can be applied. For starters, let's take a closer look at what's happening in that first example. The notes of an E minor triad are E, G, and B. And the notes of a G major triad are G, B, and D. So they have two notes in common. And when you bring in that low E note, your G major triad now has all the information of an E minor chord plus an extra D on top. So what it really sounds like isn't just an E minor, but an E minor seven. And is that really the same? Well, yes or no. It sounds a little different, but it sounds good. And part of the fun of thinking about chords this way in the first place is that if you're trying to come up with parts for a song you wrote or a song you're trying to cover, taking this kind of approach can sometimes lead to uh, slightly different chord flavors or chord voicings that you might not have thought of otherwise. But first, you might be wondering, why would you ever need to work this hard? Why, why can't you just play the chord you're trying to play? Why would you ever have to just force a major try to do it? Well, for me, this comes up a lot because of sampling. One thing I like to do is not just sample a noise or a sound or a single note, but to sample an entire chord, like a major chord. And then, like if I'm using the Electron Octatrack sampler, for instance, uh, there's all kinds of things I can do to that major chord that will make it sound awesome. I love that sound. All I ever want to do is use that sound. But it can be hard to sound good when the only chord you can play is a major chord. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use that sound and play any type of chord in the world? Well, we can do that. You can do anything you want if you just make adjustments. All we got to do is bring in some bass notes and then choose very carefully which major triad to put over the bass notes. But I'll tell you how to do it right now. Let's take one last look at that first example. We're trying to make an E minor. We can only play major triads. E is the root of the chord. So we put our bass note on E. The bass notes are always going to be playing the roots. Put the bass note on E, and then the major triad we already said goes three half steps above that. You win. For every example that follows, the bass note will be the root, and I'm just going to tell you how many half steps above or below that root to put your major triad. If you see a major 7 chord or a major 9 chord, you can either ignore that part and just treat it as a basic major triad to start with, or you can play a major triad 7 half steps above the root. For a major 7 sharp 11 chord, put the major triad 2 half steps above the root. Also, just so you know, I put all this information in the video description. So if you want, you can just get it there and skip ahead to the part where I talk about using this on a Stevie Wonder song. Otherwise, I'm just going to finish doing this chart. If you see minor 6, minor 7, minor 9, or minor 11, you can again just ignore those numbers and treat it as a basic minor chord. And again, the rule for that is play a major triad three half steps above the root. The only time that won't work is for a minor major seven chord, in which case play a major triad seven half steps above the root. For a dominant seven, dominant nine, or dominant 13 chord, you can again just ignore the fancy part there and treat it like a basic major triad. You could do that with any dominant chord that is not altered. Altered means that the fifth or the ninth or both have been flattened or sharpened. If you see that, now it's an altered dominant chord. And what you should do instead is play a major triad six half steps above the root. So for instance, here's a dominant seven flat five chord. It's altered because we touched the five. It's a flat five. Here's a major triad 
six half steps above the root. For a suspended fourth chord, try putting the triad two half steps below the root. And if that doesn't sound right, try putting it five half steps above the root. For a suspended second chord, try either of the things for suspended fourth, or you can put a major triad seven half steps above the root. For a diminished chord, or a half diminished seven chord, also known as a minor seven flat five chord, put your major triad six half steps above the root. For a full diminished seven chord, I think your best bet is to put the major triad one half step below the root, but this time I also want you to move the bass note down one half step too, so the root is changing. They're both going down one half step, the major triad and the bass note it's over. So if you start with like a D sharp diminished seven, put the bass note on D one half step down from D sharp and put the major triad on D also. So D sharp diminished seven becomes D natural major. One cool thing about this is that if anyone else in your band still plays the D sharp diminished seven or if any other instruments in your arrangement still play that, all together it will just create a D7 flat 9 sound. For an augmented major 7, put the major triad four half steps above the root. And for just an augmented triad or an augmented 7 triad, there's two things you can do. One is to just dumb it down and replace it with a major triad. So instead of D augmented, you can play D major. The other thing you could do is treat it like an altered dominant chord and play a major triad, a tritone away, six half steps above the root. Now that sounded pretty fucked up and different, but there are times when that can be dope too. But instead of talking about it, let's switch to working on an example where that actually comes up. Um, let's pick a song that I'm going to try to cover using my octa track so I can only play major triads and we'll rewrite the entire chord progression of the song to make it work. And the song we're going to do is Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. Chords in this song are C sharp minor 7, F sharp dominant 7, B suspended 4, E major. And then C sharp minor 7 again, F sharp 7, B suspended 4th again, E major. Then it goes to A major 9, beautiful, G sharp dominant 7 flat 9. In fact, I think it might be a G sharp dominant seven, sharp five, flat nine. You got to love Stevie Wonder for sticking that chord in everybody's face and making it sound good. Let's listen again. Okay, then it goes C sharp minor seven, F sharp dominant seven, B suspended fourth, E. And then there's that last little thing, and it goes to a G sharp augmented seven or a, a G sharp dominant seven sharp five. So let's go through and um, swap out the chords as needed so that I can play my major triads over everything. All right. First is C sharp minor seven. That's a minor chord. We're just going to put a major triad that is three half steps above that. So that would be E. Then next is F sharp seven. Just call that F sharp. Next is B sus four. I'm going to replace that with a major triad two half steps below, A. So I'm going to play it A over B. It's going to turn it into like a dominant nine suspended fourth chord. That's going to sound real good. Then E, just leave it as E. Okay, then it just does those four chords again. Okay, then it goes to A major nine. We can just call that an A. Then it goes to G sharp seven, sharp five, flat nine. Now, it's actually hard to find a major triad in the top part of that chord, in the upper extensions. It's actually hard to stick a major triad in there. So instead, we're just going to call it G sharp, G sharp major, dumb it right down. C sharp minor seven again, that's an E. F sharp seven, we leave as F sharp. B sus four, we saw already, that's going to be an A. E major, we leave as E. And then at the end, we have the G sharp seven sharp five, or the G augmented seven. For now, let's just dumb that down and call it a G sharp. Here's what it sounds like if I program my octatrack to play all that using the chord substitutions with the bass notes that'll make everything sound like the original version.
Now that's saying a fine, but if we look at it again, there are actually a couple opportunities to do something stylish. One is in the first part when the progression loops back around, I end up playing an E major followed by a C sharp minor seven. But I'm already using E major to make my C sharp minor seven. So I end up playing two E major triads in a row. And the bass note is the only thing that conveys the chord change there. So if I want to make it sound like more of a change, one thing we can do is just go in and insert another chord change. Now, is it really okay to do something like that? Well, sure, you could do whatever you want as long as it sounds good. And I think this is going to sound fine because all we're going to do is insert a little B major inversion right there. We're going to do this walk down thing where it goes from E major to B major over D sharp to C sharp minor seven. Okay, there's another stylish thing we can do. There's that A major nine chord. Um, right now, I'm just playing that as an A major. But if you look at the top of an A major nine, there's like an E major in there too, up at the extension. So let's play E major there instead of A major. Okay, I think that sounds cool. And then at the end, uh, there's the augmented seven chord which we dumbed down to just a G sharp major. The other thing to do with an augmented seven is to treat it like a dominant seven, a dominant seven sharp five, which is altered. So instead of dumbing it down, which is taking out some of the tension, we could go really far in the other direction and add a lot of tension, which would be to uh, take a, major triad that's a tritone away. So instead of G sharp, we're going to play D major over G sharp. This is what that sounds like. Now, I didn't hate that. It didn't really sound like an augmented chord anymore, but it had the same function. And the function is fuck you, right? The, the function is just a whole lot of dominant style tension that makes you want it to resolve to the top of the form. And that's what it does. It's just this sort of like horrible moment of dominant seven atrocity with a lot of tritones in it. And then as soon as we get back to the top of the form and we hear that nice, smooth C sharp minor seven chord, all is forgiven. So for my little arrangement, that's what I did. But before I play for you, there's another thing we got to talk about, which is that I got my Octatrack that I've been using for this whole video from Buyer Bar Music. Buyer Bar Music is a monthly subscription service you can sign up for where you can try any gear you want. They'll send it to you. You do what you got to do. Then you send it back and you get the next thing on your list. And if you want to keep any of it, you can buy it at a discount. And if you want to try it out, you can use the promotional code CYBERATTACK to get 20% off your first month. Okay. Now here's my little arrangement of Isn't She Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> 